Hello, it's Kyle Gray here and I'm very excited to be here today because I'm going to take you on a tour through my Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. The Gateway of Light Activation Oracle is a deck that is inspired by the idea that throughout this universe there are portals, gateways and even stargates that allow us to access information, intelligence and wisdom in different dimensions. The idea of gateways or vortices or portals to other dimensions is not new. It's in fact in many different spiritual traditions across the planet. And these ideas are going back hundreds and even thousands of years that in certain parts of the world or even certain parts of the body, we hold these spaces that can allow us to access information that will guide us to living our greatest purpose. The Gateway of Light Activation Oracle is a 44 Oracle card deck illustrated by the incredible Jennifer Hawkyard. And it's a deck that is really set to inspire you receiving messages from your internal guidance system, your inner teacher, your spiritual guides, and also the guides that are overseeing the entire universe. Let me take you on a tour through the deck now. So let's start by opening up the box. This is what you're gonna get when you get a copy of the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. And the deck is printed on a heavy card stock and it's a matte quality printing we've done on this deck. Inside the box, you'll find these little prayers that I've written for the deck. So the top of the box says, as above, so below, so within, as without connections to heaven and earth through the stargate of your heart. We've also got on the back of the box, I call forth from within the light of source. Thank you for standing at the forefront of my heart and mind. Thank you for activating the ancient wisdom of my soul. I welcome in the support of heaven, earth, the stars, light beings and beyond. The deck comes with a guidebook and let me just tell you, I go to town in this guidebook. It is the biggest one I've ever written for any Oracle deck of this size. And we actually had to trim back maybe about 10,000 words in order for us to be able to fit the guidebook in the box. The cards are going to come wrapped in a little bit of paper. We'll break that open and they are printed on a heavy cardstock. Now let's just talk about this before we go any further. When you first get an Oracle card deck, you might not realize, but in order for them to get everything in the box and in order for it all to be wrapped, they compress it. And so sometimes when you first get a new deck, the cards might feel a little bit sticky, um, like all the cards are sticking to each other. But over, you know, a few uses, you'll find that that stickiness will go away. And the best way to kind of get past that stickiness of the cards is by just taking time to go through each and every single card, peeling away each card from each other. And then eventually when you go to shuffle, it will run super smooth. I know this to be true because I've got my own copy of this deck and I've been using it for a number of months because I got a, a copy just to check the printing quality and now it shuffles beautifully. So just bear in mind when you first get a deck, if it feels sticky, it's because it's new. And then once you put a little bit of energy and love into it, it's gonna glide effortlessly. So now that you have seen that you get a guidebook, the deck itself and the box has these beautiful inspired prayers inside of them. Let's just talk about how the deck works and let's talk about what you're gonna see inside the guidebook. So the guidebook is, like I said, quite a thick book and it starts with just a, an introduction uh, to the deck. You'll also find in the deck that every single card is listed alphabetically so that if you want to find my interpretation of the cards included, you'll be able to access them quite quickly. 
So the guidebook will tell you how to use your Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. And I will say this, if you've got any other Oracle deck by me, I've followed that kind of same process of accessing guidance. It's nothing different or nothing new to what I've taught before. But if you've never worked with any Oracle deck that I've created before, I highly recommend you take a moment and read the process of how I work with cards because it does differ to other card readers out there. And I've always found that taking time just to read the introduction at least in a guidebook of a deck that you want to work with is very helpful because then you can understand the intention and the energy that's went into creating this deck. And if you can kind of get an idea of the intention that went behind the creation of the deck, your experience working with it is going to be far different from kind of just figuring it out as you go. I've always said it's really good to read the, the, the guidebook um, by an author, uh, especially if they've created it, because a lot of time and energy and effort goes into the creation of these Oracle decks. You know, it's like maybe two years work and it, it's important just to kind of understand, you know, how it comes together. A few things I want to bring to your awareness. So the first part of the guidebook talks about activations. And if you've never heard of the word activation or you have heard of it, but you don't know what it means, activation is a bit of a spiritual buzzword right now. And it comes from this idea that within us, in the core of our being, in our soul self, is this kind of wisdom and information and intelligence that has been carried with our being through lifetimes upon lifetimes upon lifetimes. We know for a fact that the human being is comprised of the particles of former stars, and so therefore all of us hold within our being the wisdom of the cosmos. And that information, that wisdom, and that intelligence could be laying dormant in the pit of our being. And when we set the intention to activate, what we're actually doing is we're giving permission to the ancient aspects of the soul to switch on. So an activation is ultimately this intention behind, um, you know, a prayer or a meditation or even a card that switches on in our being information, intelligence and wisdom that has been carried within us for millennia. So that's what we're doing. We're activating it because there's a good chance that a lot of us are holding all this innate wisdom in our being, but it's kind of sitting there dormantly. And when we activate it, we give it permission to switch on. So that's what an activation is. Uh, every single card of the deck is a gateway, uh, but you'll also find that some of the cards are beings and um, they are also considered gateways as far as I'm concerned. So we've got every single card as a gateway, even if it is a being, the being is the gateway to that energy. Um, so that's one part that we speak about. There's also chakra cards inside the deck, but again, a chakra or chakra is how you properly say it in Sanskrit. Chakra is the Sanskrit word, which means wheel with the intention of a vortice. Uh, which is the kind of gateways to our own spiritual anatomy. So again, they are also a gateway. We've got spiritual retreats inside the deck. Uh, I'll give you an example. The top card is the Akashic Record. So that's like, you know, this ancient idea of a space in the cosmos that holds all of the information. It's a compendium of wisdom and information and events that have happened in the entire universe. A spiritual retreat. But you'll see other ones in there like Shambhala, which is the Buddhist city of light in the center of the Himalayas. We've got light beings in the deck. And these are kind of like the angelic forces and the cosmic forces and guides of the universe. And then we've got light codes, upgrades and downloads. So each card will, will kind of determine, you know, if it's a, a light code or an upgrade or a download. And a light code is just like information coming from a higher being. An upgrade is something happening to your system that is allowing you to have a more clearer perception. And then a download is when you receive something from a higher nature that will then allow you to access more information. So all of this is held inside of the deck. 
I speak a little bit about free will and the law of attraction and how that works with your oracle deck. I speak about how it's important to approach the deck with integrity. And, you know, so many of us have worked with oracle cards over the years and we'll pick a card and we don't maybe understand or even like what that card says some days. And it's important to trust what comes out, even if you don't like it, because when you trust what comes out, it allows you to access a deeper level of, of an integrity and authenticity that will, again, really affect your experience when working with divine guidance. I speak about bonding with the deck and I give a prayer and activation ceremony for you to work with creating a strong bond with the deck. And then how to store your cards and then conducting readings. And inside the book, I share my four pillars of um, experiencing high vibration, particularly angelic frequencies. Uh, the first one is authenticity. Always be willing to stay aligned to the energies of truth and integrity. Being authentic allows you to be in direct alignment with source. Devotion. Every spiritual practice is an opportunity to honor the source of creation and wonder, miracles and light that it is. Being devoted allows you to access the unconditional love of your creator. Love, embody love constantly and consistently. Love is the real you. After all, let love lead the way. And then service. True sustenance comes from service. This can be in whatever shape or form feels aligned with your truth. But when you serve source, you will be served tenfold in return. I share a couple of great spreads. The two card spread, which is really brilliant for quick insight. The strength heart challenge spread, which is the kind of famous one that um, I teach through my angel team, uh, angel card mastery program. It teaches us to kind of take the traditional three card spread. The first card being our strength, something that the universe wants us to kind of recognize that we've shifted into and trusted within. The second card being the heart, what our heart wants us to acknowledge, realize, and know. And then the third card is the challenge card, is what we need to work on in order to fully embody the strength and the heart that we hold within us. So that's a really great spread. And then I've created this spread here. It's a seven card spread, which is the Stellar Gateway spread. And the Stellar Gateway, I'll just read it to you, is our highest chakra and it's the vortex of all our energies and all of our incarnations and also the sacred container that holds all of our intentional energy in this lifetime. This seven card spread is amazing for tracking down the energies we have brought into this incarnation. It's really cool this spread because what we do is we, we combine the energies of as above, so below. Uh, so check the spread out. The first card represents your natural source given gifts and strengths. The second is about the energies uh, being expressed from your heart. And the third card is the challenges you may be carrying as a result of previous incarnations um, or even from your birth. Uh, the fourth card is about the strength and the gifts uncovered in the, this current lifetime. The fifth is meshes from your heart um, in this present incarnation. The sixth card is the soul-based challenge that you're here to work on in this lifetime. And the seventh card, the central card in the Merkaba, which is this, this uh, star formation, represents a facet of who you truly are on a soul level. So that's one big spread I share. The other one I share is the Akashic Records spread. This deck is amazing for doing Akashic record readings. This is about looking at all of the big lessons that you've had before you have even come into this lifetime. It's the space that we go to in order to clear karma. And karma, in this sense, is more about 
the stories, the patterns, and the kind of limitations that we've carried in our soul from previous incarnations or even the karma that we're undoing um, in our family lineage. For example, you know, all of us have probably got fear-based ideas and limitations that have been passed on to us from our family. And it's not that they're doing it intentionally, but these are kind of old ways of being and stories that could be limiting our experience of truth, of purpose, of freedom. Uh, so this deck is going to help you access and clear all of that information. So we've got the Akashic record spread as well. And that's really just about helping you kind of access your gifts, the frequency you're carrying, the lessons from your soul group, which is kind of like the bigger pull of your soul self. Uh, it also helps you kind of crack into the energetic blockages, your fears, the challenges you need to surmount in order to grow. And then the final part of the reading is kind of the divine plan. It kind of helps you see your soul's goal, your intentions now you are here on the planet, and the path of your life during this incarnation. So, big stuff. Now that I've introduced you to the guidebook, some of the spreads that are included there that I encourage you to take a deeper dive with, let's go on a tour of the deck. So showing you the back of the deck, first of all, this is actually one of the cards inside of the deck, but we've changed it slightly. It's actually the Gaia Gateway, and the back of the deck is kind of like this kind of portal or stargate into the heart of the earth. And um, you'll see here this portal stargate is surrounded by um, these cool glyphs. And it's light language, uh, which is kind of like codes and information from the heart of the universe. I'll take you through the deck in alphabetical order. So the first card is Akashic Records. And the keywords are clearing old stories, releasing past lives, and freedom. And like I said before, the Akashic Records are this kind of compendium of events and cir circumstances and stories and experiences of every single being and every single event in the entire universe. And when the Akashic Records card comes up, it really just represents an opportunity to revisit old energies and release past life kind of limitations and experience more freedom. We've got the Akashic Stargate. And this card was kind of from the intention of there are many roads and there are many different directions that we can all take in our life. And it's important to know that whatever choice we make and whatever uh, direction we go in, it's never the wrong path because it's the opportunity to learn and grow. And every single choice we make is our own choice. So the Akashic Stargate is the card that says aligned with purpose crossroads, no wrong path. So if you find yourself at a crossroads, this card reminds you that there is no wrong path in the sense where, you know, can I go this way or that way? They're both going to lead you to knowing yourself deeper anyway. We've got the ancestral realm card, which is karmic release, healing the lineage and boundaries. And this is kind of a Celtic inspired card with the uh, standing stones. And this is supposed to be a kind of DNA strand we've got. And underneath it, there's like flames and it's like burning through the old patterns in the DNA. We've got an angelic frequency card representing the angels. And it says, angels are here. You are safe, potent connection. And this is kind of Inspired by the Matrix, when we were speaking about this car, I was like, I want streams of light coming down, like you're downloading information. And that's what the Angelic Frequency card is all about. It's about receiving support, guidance, information, intuition that will lead you to, you know, feeling supported and safe. We've got the Anunnaki Light Codes. And the Anunnaki are a cosmic, angelic, race of beings 
uh, strongly associated with Sumerian and Babylonian times. And their presence is really this angelic force that can help us kind of tune into energetic shifts, new information, and the end of a cycle. So they're kind of like this cosmic race and different ideas around them exist out there. Some people believe that they were on the earth and they ascended. Some people say they came to the earth. I'll leave that up to you to decide, but ultimately this card is to kind of inspire a shift or a change, an evolution, ultimately. We've got the Arcturian light codes and the Arcturians are a alien race, a cosmic race of beings, the blue ones, as they're called, blue beings. And this card is about evolutionary downloads, uh, recalling power and future thinking. And what I've learned about the idea of the Arcturians is that they're in this star system that is probably beyond the dimension that we can even understand. And they're in the future. Like when we look up, up at the stars and we kind of tune into the Arcturian energy and Arcturus, this kind of star system, uh, it's in the future. And so the idea of the Arcturian energy coming to you, the light codes coming to you, is about helping you support where you are and the planet into this kind of evolutionary thinking uh, and this opportunity to recall power so that we don't ruin the earth, but we make it better. We've got the central sun. The central sun is inspired by our sun, but in the kind of center of every kind of uh, universe, there is a central sun. And it's kind of like the source of life and light that inspires all the other planets and supports all the other planets regenerating and growing. And so the central sun card is the abundance card. It's about downloading kind of support and this opportunity to thrive. Uh, regeneration, finding a way to recover, uh, but also success. And we have a, a scarab in this card inspired by kind of Egyptian mystery, because if you've ever seen uh, a scarab, which is a type of beetle, it mimics the movement of the sun on the sand. Um, it's fascinating. Look it up. We've got the Chamber of the Violet Flame. Love those cards. And the Violet Flame is this kind of spiritual energy where we go to kind of surrender and release and let go um, of old patterns, old ideas, um, anything that has limited our experience of freedom. Uh, it's a spiritual concept that's been kind of brought through many different kind of spiritual teachings in the kind of new modern age of spirituality. Uh, so this card represents karmic release and radical transformation. Here's the first chakra that I guess we're introducing in this video today. It's the crown chakra upgrade, divine connection, holy experiences, and miraculous energy. The crown chakra, also known as Sahasrara, is that thousand petaled lotus uh, at the top of the crown and it's the chakra or the energy center that represents our own direct experience with the divine. And when we created this card, we kind of wanted to embody the idea of the Shekinah or the Holy Spirit. Um, this dove of pure brilliance and light uh, representing our own experience of the divine. And so that's what this card represents when it shows up. It's kind of the confirmation that what you may be experiencing in your life is a direct experience of the force of creation, the universe itself, or even if you want to call it, God. You've got the Crystal Skull Wisdom card, and this here in the center is my Crystal Skull, Portal Sedona Boy. And the crystal skulls are said to be these containers of earthly wisdom. Uh, if you think that crystals hold wisdom and information of the universe, when you carve a quartz into the shape of a skull, its brain becomes that information. And so I'm really interested in crystal skulls. There's a lot of information out there about 
them being ancient. I'm more interested in more contemporary crystal skulls, the idea that we can take something that's ancient itself, like a, a piece of quartz, you know, millions of years old, most likely, and fashion it into the shape of a, a skull. We kind of like, we empower its mind, its brain is quartz itself, and quartz holds information and insights from the heart of the earth. So this card showing up is about having kind of a crystal clear mind and clarity and with clarity comes divine healing and the opportunity to experience high vibrational energy. So think of it about having a clear mind when this card shows up. We've got the divine matrix and the divine matrix is kind of like the grid of all of life itself, all of wisdom itself. Like if you tune into the quantum field, the entanglement that's happening in the universe is the divine matrix. And this card is about interconnectedness, synchronicity, and I've even put the word God incidences. So when there's these coincidences happening in your life that are not coincidences, that feels like they are universally inspired, the divine matrix is everything to do with that. It's a God incidence, the, the divine inspired coincidence. Woo. The earth star is the anchor to the earth and it's one of the chakras, the new chakras as we call them. This card here is the earth star activation. That means we're switching on our connection our, our, to the earth star. And it's a, a card that brings anchoring and grounded action. But I've also got a being in this card and it's Isis, the goddess Isis. She was not only the queen of heaven, but the queen of the underworld. And the underworld is not necessarily what we kind of in the Abrahamic West think of hell, no. The underworld is that place we go um, to recuperate and reclaim the parts of ourselves that were left behind. It's this kind of space that we can go into and reclaim the stuff that we laid to rest and the stuff that we laid to bed that we didn't need to. It's the stuff that we can reclaim to be powerful once more. And the, the underworld is a space of initiation. Uh, so... I've put Isis energy there and Isis is about kind of drawing the best of ourself f f from the, the, the depths of our soul, the underworld within, to raise it up towards the heavens. Amazing. The Emerald Tablet Activation card. And the Emerald Tablet is said to be this kind of emerald piece of crystal that's inscribed with the secrets of the universe and it's said to come from Atlantis and be buried beneath the great pyramid of Giza. Um, it's where the uh, ideas of cosmic ordering and manifestation and the law of attraction all came from. And so this card is the card of cosmic ordering. That's when you make an intention to the universe and you draw something into creation. It's the card of divine alchemy where you take something dark in your life and you make it golden, uh, but also conscious manifesting, like not just manifesting something because you want it, creating something because the world needs it. That's what conscious manifesting is. Here's the Gaia gateway, and that's the card that inspired the back of the deck. So it's the card that says learning experiences, wisdom, transmission, earth, intelligence. And the Gaia Gateway is the chakra below the earth star. So you anchor into the earth and you ground into the earth. And once you've created a, a rapport and a strength with the earth, the Gaia Gateway opens up. And the Gaia Gateway is kind of like the stargate or portal into the heart of early consciousness held in the earth. It's like what spurred the earth into creation. It's like that energy that allowed this planet to become what it is today. And when we connect through the Gaia Gateway, we can ask the earth 
for information and insights and understanding of survival and regeneration and how she became to be what she is today. So Earth Intelligence can be a great help to us. She's been here for millennia. We've got the Halls of Amenti initiation. Uh, this card is a is is a big card because when it shows up, it's confronting. Any initiation in your life is confronting. It's like a, an opportunity to see something differently. Um, that is good. It can be challenging though. So it's a card that kind of reveals secrets and uncovers treasure. Uh, and initiates us into a deeper sense of understanding. This card was inspired by the High Priestess card in the traditional tarot because we've got the two pillars. Uh, and these two pillars, the black and the white pillar, are actually inspired by the building of the Temple of Solomon um, in the traditional tarot. So really, this is about inspired action. It's about initiations and an understanding of the secrets of the universe. In the center, you'll see a stargate with a pyramid in that as well. The halls of Amenti are said to be this kind of higher dimensional space that we can visit, that have been kind of brought from Atlantis, that help us understand the secrets of the universe. Big stuff. The halls of learning are a place that I went to when I first started meditating. When I was like 15 years old, I kept being taken to this giant hall. The best way to describe it was like Hogwarts in the sky. And I remember going to this place and telling my one of my first kind of spiritual teachers about it. She went, oh, you've been going to the halls of learning. That's where spirit guides are sent um, to train as spirit guides. So this card is the card of spirit guides. It's a card of confirmation and great lessons. It's kind of like the place you go on a spiritual level to learn the secrets of the universe. So when you get the Halls of Learning card, it's it's a card that kind of confirms that what you're experiencing is indeed a lesson that is heaven sent. We've got the Hathor light codes and the Hathors inspired by Hathor, the, the goddess of ancient Egypt, the cow goddess. Um, so she's got the face of kind of a being, but the ears of a cow. And the reason she has been inspired by the cow is because the, the horns of a cow are said to be wisdom and the milk of a cow is said to bring sustenance and uh, nurture. So she's kind of like this cosmic mother but the Hathors are said to be, again, a cosmic race of beings, um, kind of stemming from Venus. And when this card comes to you, it's a light immersion. So your whole entire life is being immersed in light. It's a full system upgrade and a power recall. It's like the opportunity to reclaim the parts of yourself that you may be left in old relationships or at your old job or uh, even in your childhood. It's a power recall. You pull it all back so that you can have this full system upgrade and be a renewed you. So we've got the Hathors. This card is the heart of source. And that's basically the heart of the divine. It's like the center of the universe. All encompassing love, unconditional acceptance and serenity. Love this card. We've got the higher heart activation. So the heart chakra has an extension to it and that's the higher heart. It's said to be pink. And this is like the card that represents dropping down the need to try and protect yourself. You know, this idea that in your defenselessness, your safety lies because when you don't feel the need to fight, you're safe. It's about stepping into vulnerability and kind of letting the shields drop down, knowing that um, you don't need to protect yourself because the divine is doing it for you. And this is the card that represents dropping shields, divine love, and the confirmation that your heart is healed. Big stuff. We've got the Holy Grail card, inspired by Glastonbury. 
the vesica pisces of the linking of the two circles here is um an honoring of the chalice well in glastonbury and the holy grail card represents an inner discovery finding sacredness and that you are what you seek this card the holy grail is recognizing that what you've been searching for is actually within. It's the card that turns you back to you. You are the Holy Grail in this sense. The I am presence, and the I am presence is kind of like what they call in yoga, the radiant body. It's the, the self that is brought back together. So all of the parts of your self that you left behind and the parts of yourself that you repressed and abandoned. It's the culmination of your spirit, your mind and your body all becoming one and you activate this I am presence. And it's the light body that you hold within you. And so this card represents light body activation, accessing the divine within. Your whole spiritual journey might turn you towards going up and searching for but ultimately it's more about switching on and allowing to rise up from within. And if you can allow to rise up from within the ancient aspects of the self and the whole self, um, the I am presence is activated. So this is about you coming to the true you. We've got the inner earth inspired by the root chakra or the base chakra. And that's the inner earth within you. And it's representing strength and security and creating a foundation in which everything else in your life can be built upon. Uh, so this card kind of calls you in and to get a kind of strong base so that you can build from the ground up. Love this card coming up next, the karmic board clearing. And the karmic board is this congregation of ascended masters and light beings that you can go to in prayer and intention uh, to invite them to remove and cut down in a way any of the old kind of cords and experiences and stories that are binding you into the past. So it's an energetic clearing card an opportunity for you to rewrite your story and live your truth. So when this card comes up, you're in that space where you're breaking down the old and making way for the new. The Lemurian Seed Codes. And this is actually one of my crystals um, that we put in the deck. And the Lemurian people are an ancient civilization that was said to be in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And these beings were highly intuitive and intelligent beings. Think Avatar, you know, these beings that knew how to live on the land in complete harmony and respect for the land. And the idea is that either the Lemurians ascended or were kind of washed out or both. And the idea is that some people in the Lemurian kind of civilization didn't fully respect the land and um, they were washed out. But the rest of them who completely did were able to move beyond this dimension. But the idea is that the high priestesses of ancient Lemuria had all this information and understanding of the earth that they sent into the earth and it's held by certain crystals and they're called Lemurian Seed Crystals, and that's why we were inspired to create this card. And like I said, the Lemurians were completely sensitive beings, and so this card's about embracing sensitivity and uniqueness, but also learning to live with grace and complete respect of the land. This card here, Memories of Atlantis. So like the Lemurians, the Atlanteans were a kind of higher race, of beings and it said that they were here way beyond civilization that we know today. So if we talk about ancient Egyptians and all that, the Atlanteans were way before then. And this is a card of spiritual acceleration and progress and technology because the Atlanteans were so ahead of their time and they were, you know, incredible scientists and they used technology and 
they were able to do so much that we couldn't even begin to think of. Like, think Tesla, but, you know, times it by a million. And that was the Atlanteans. They were way ahead. The problem was, in their way of being, a lot of people desired great power. And it turned them all against each other. And it said that a cataclysmic event buried deep into... Um, the center of the Atlantic Ocean, the entire civilization. Many of the Atlanteans that were in alignment and awareness were said to f kind of flee. And some of them went to Africa and some of them went other parts of the world and um, supposedly started new civilization. There's this idea that many people being incarnated on the planet now, including us, were maybe Atlanteans back on the earth one more time to try not and make the same mistakes. And I believe that the time that we're living in is this kind of mirror to the Atlantean era where we have so many kind of patriarchal systems of power in place where we are having this great opportunity to rise beyond it um, and not make the same mistakes our souls made in previous incarnations. So, Memories of Atlantis is about spiritual acceleration and progress and technology, but it's also an opportunity to see that we're not here to make the same mistakes we did the last time. Merkaba activation. Mer means light, Ka means spirit, Ba means body. Merkaba, light, spirit, body. And the Merkaba is basically what the ancient yogis never taught us. Maybe they knew what it was, but they just never gave this part away. The Merkaba is the kind of synchronization of when you activate all the spiritual energy centers within your being and you are in complete alignment with source, you switch on this thing called the Merkaba. And the Merkaba is kind of like the light body. It is the I am presence, but it's the vehicle in which carries you up and out into the universe. It allows you to kind of go forward in the universe and back. And so you heard this idea of Kundalini being activated. The Kundalini rises up, it pulses through all of the chakra centers. When it gets to the crown chakra, the crown chakra pierces open. And then that links you into the higher chakras of the soul star and the stellar gateway. And when you are in complete alignment with all of that, you then access the earth star and the Gaia gateway. And when you're in complete connection to all of that, this Merkaba switches on. The Merkaba is kind of like this kind of four dimensional uh, star that kind of lets you go into the future, into the past with the intelligence of the universe and the awareness of the earth. Uh, so I really love this kind of idea and Merkaba is a word that is repeated in different languages. It was kind of associated with ancient Egypt, it's kind of in Hebrew and there's even kind of information out there that says that even Zulu people know what Merkaba means or they use that word to kind of represent this light body activation. So the Merkaba activation is about transcendence, it's about rising up, it's about ascension. And ascension is not about leaving the body, but more fully arriving in the body with the full awareness that you are also light. And so this card comes up and it says you are rising up. Love that card. We've got the Order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek was the first ever high priest in the Hebrew Bible who kind of went on to initiate all the great founding fathers that created some of the world's greatest uh, spiritual paths and religions, including Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. And so the order of Melchizedek is the kind of card that embraces you by light. It says, mission uncovered, do not give up. And so when this card shows up for you, it's kind of like Melchizedek and uh, his order. Um, initiating you and saying, do not give up on your life purpose. Do not give up on your dreams. Do not give up on your journey. Your mission is being revealed to you. We've got the Orion activation. And Orion, as you know, Orion's belt. But Orion is a, a star system. And this card says, supernova, recreation, renewal, and rebirth by light. So supernova is this gigantic explosion that creates a star system. 
And so this car showing up in your life is a supernova. There's like this kind of something coming into itself in order to be rebirthed and recreated. So this card is kind of like the window of your soul, the window of opportunity, an opportunity to be renewed. You've got the Palladian activation. The Pallades is a star system of seven stars called the Seven Sisters. And I love this card because it's about coming together, harmony in the heavens and resolution. So Palladian energy kind of comes in peace and it helps you kind of create resolution in your life. The Pleiadian uh, race is a, again a race of cosmic beings and I didn't want to put a face on them because I think they're beyond what we know as you know human identity. They're kind of a consciousness of awareness. We've got sacred inner space which is the sacral chakra. Uh, the sacral chakra is known as Svadhisthana in Sanskrit, which means one's own place. And it's the sacred space in us that represents our reproductive system and kind of our capacity to create. Um, it represents our sexuality and our sensuality and our opportunity to connect, connect with other beings on that level. And so this is about reclaiming the sacred space and reclaiming our pelvic region uh, because it's the one space in all of us that has probably been uh, abused uh, either by others or by the media, you know, like how we're taught to see the kind of pelvic region as this kind of place that we shouldn't treat a certain way or it has to be treated a certain way or it has to be hidden and uh, out of sight, you know, it's kind of misaligned in the world and it's the card that represents the opportunity to reclaim the sensual and tender parts of herself. The next card is Seraphim's Gateway. This is an angelic being. The Seraphim is said to be the highest angelic order and they are the angels that sing in complete devotion and praise of the divine. So if you've ever went to a class and someone's chanting so beautifully, think of the seraphim doing that towards the source of creation. And this is the card that activates your voice. Uh, it's an angelic attunement that brings divine support. So it's a card that kind of inspires you to kind of speak up and be heard, uh, but attunes you to divine support as you do so. We've got the Shambhala initiations and Shambhala is the hidden city of light in the center of the Himalayas and this idea of a hidden city of light is kind of taught in Buddhist teachings but it's also through a lot of yogic traditions as well and this card is about retreating to recharge trusting in the process of you know your path and your experience and your journey and that ultimately is what it means by dharma. Dharma is your purpose. It's, it's what you're here to do. It's what you're here to fulfill. So karma is kind of the stuff that you need to learn as you embody your dharma. So dharma is your purpose. And the Shambhala Initiations card kind of allows you to take some time to reflect and recharge in order for you to move through the process of fulfilling your purpose. We've got the Yes card as Sirius Star Blessings. Uh, so Sirius is a star system and the Syrian energy is about yes, go forth, proceed, keep pushing. And so whenever this card shows up for you, it's kind of this message that what you're doing is working out, do not give up. We have the solar light upgrade, which is the solar plexus chakra. And the solar plexus, known as Mani Pura, which means the lustrous gem, is the fire center of the body. It's kind of like the, the sun of your being. And it's that little part of us that has fire and our inner fire is here to warm us, not burn us. And so whenever this card shows up, it's about tuning into our willpower, but not allowing it to be so forceful that we end up being burnt 
in the process or burnt out in the process. So it's the upgrade card that kind of allows us to have a deeper awareness of our inner fire without it burning us out. We've got the Soul Star activation. And this card is inspired by Horus, uh, the Egyptian hawk eye or eagle eyed god. And, you know, really excited by this because the Soul Star is the chakra or the energy center that is above the crown. And it's in that space, the Soul Star, that we hold all of the memories of all of our lifetimes and all of the reasoning that we have been incarnated or reincarnated on this planet. So when this card shows up, it means that wherever you are in your life, you're fulfilling some sort of soul contract, but you're also in this process of deeply remembering who you are. The reason we used Horus in this card is because Horus is kind of the hawk eye view of life being able to see things from a higher perspective and the reason Horus had this hawk eye is it was representative of his capacity to be in the heavens and that's what this card is all about allowing you to see down from the heavens a clearer perspective of the situation or situations that you are in. We've got the star gathering and that's about all the stars kind of aligning for you uh, but it's also the card that helps us remember home like i said all of us have come from the stars so if you've ever had that feeling of you know standing out on a clear night and you look up to the stars and you see them all twinkling and shining down and it feels really good it's because you came from there you you, you have that's who you are and so it's about remembering your soul power and remembering your star potential. So this card brings the stars into alignment, remembering home and soul family. And soul family is about finding the other stars in your world and life that remind you of who you truly are and why you're here. We've got the star being healing codes and that's about the star beings, the beings from the stars who are still existing on that multi-dimensional level who can bring healing to our world, kind of like angels. And it says important information, wounds are being healed, recharging. Stargate heart and that's the heart chakra. And the heart chakra in Sanskrit is known as Anahata, which means the unstruck. And that basically is this idea that even though it feels like a heart can be broken, the spiritual heart can never be broken. It's the one part of us that remains whole, healed and complete, forever untarnished. And so this card represents the unlocking of something, you know, the opening up of something and the capacity to be altruistic. So that's why we've put generosity as um, one of the keywords. The heart is this ability to give without needing to receive. The Stellar Gateway activation. So we were speaking about the Stellar Gateway already, the Stellar Gateway spread in the guidebook. So the Stellar Gateway Chakra is above the Soul Star and it's that central axis portal stargate that connects us with the infinite intelligence of the universe, also known as the Divine Matrix. And the Stellar Gateway is another space that I sometimes refer to as the Stellar Vortex. Every intention that you have, either in lifetimes beyond this lifetime or even in this lifetime are all built up in this vortice which then starts to bring into creation all of your intentions and ideas and beliefs into reality. So when the stellar gateway activation card shows up for you, you are in the middle of a space where you are tuning into your infinite potential and it's about speaking into creation what you believe to be possible. Whoa. We've got the Sword of Light and that's kind of the card that 
is dedicated to Archangel Michael because he carries that sword of light. And it's the card of divine protection, cords being cut, you know, cutting us free from anything that's holding us back and breaking through something in order to achieve. We've got the Temple of Truth, which is the throat chakra. And the throat chakra is known as Vishuddha, which means command. It's our opportunity to get something off of our chest. So this card brings in authenticity and self-expression. And this kind of gateway of, you know, energy flowing out of it is representative of that release we all feel when we get something off of our chest. The third eye activation is the card that we picked for this, the box. The third eye activation represents the brow chakra, that space between our eyebrows. Um, and it's the, the space that represents our inner vision and our ability to see clearly. And that can be seeing clearly in our life or clairvoyantly seeing what's coming in the future or creating a clear vision of our future. And with the third eye activation card showing up, that represents that clear vision switching on. We've got the Toth light codes. And Toth is this ancient Egyptian god with a small g, or master, who supposedly created the Egyptian hieroglyphs. He's known as the kind of creator of writing. And there are many ideas out there that believe that Toth was actually the Atlantean priest king who fled Atlantis before it sunk or before it kind of ended with cataclysmic circumstances. And he took all the secrets to Egypt with him. That's one of the ideas. And so this card represents light initiation, the great teacher awakening within you, and divine magic. And divine magic is about bringing something into creation with the support of the divine because it's going to support the evolution of the planet. So Toth light codes, very cool. And the final card is the Venetian Galactic Council. <laughs> the Venetians are star beings that come from Venus and Venus is the planet of love. And when this card comes to you, you are being approached by these divine beings um, who are supporting you, answering the call. Um, so if you are in this place where you feel that you're being called to do something, this card confirms that to you and reminds you that you are here to shine. So the, the keywords are star being guides, answer the call, time to shine. This is the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle, my tour of the deck. I hope that helps you kind of create a clearer understanding of the energy this deck brings to you. It's been an absolute pleasure taking you through the deck and I'm so excited to see you work with it and receive messages that support you evolving and tuning into the great teacher you hold within. Thank you so much.